So, I think it's been a little over a year since we last did a trophy discussion type video, and well, PS5 is here now, and I've been platinuming some PS5 games, so let's go over what I've been playing recently and what games I've finished completely. Much like we did last time, I'm just going to pull up PSM profiles and we'll start off that way, which if you recall in the last video, I talked about working on City Skylines and uh, well, I'm happy to report back at least for the PS4 stuff. I did finish the Platinum there, although I didn't quite do what I wanted to do, which was the full 100%. And in that last video, I think we were talking about how the population of 100% was like 20 people or something like that. It's at 121 now, but it's still a very elusive club to be a part of, which I would like. But I did get the Platinum, didn't finish all the DLC stuff that would get me to the 100%. The real issue here, there's a, there's a problematic trophy, which is what the dot 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 question mark experience a special disaster. So this one is one of those luck-based trophies. You can see how ridiculous it is. It's got the lowest percent here out of out of anything easily and uh well there's natural disasters in city builders and this one is where it's got like a 0.1 percent chance or a one percent chance of showing up or something like something like that and you can't really let the game sit there and just kind of run i mean i guess you could to an extent but um you kind of have to build your city up to a point where it can handle all the other disasters that will come in and out and it's just a pain to manage and let the game sit there and hope that you have the one percent chance of this showing up you can't control it whatsoever and I wish more developers were fully aware of the fact that they should stop putting in trophies that you can't actually influence. But that was my last um, PlayStation 4 thing. Well, no, that's not true because, um, well, <laughs> so here's some of the other stuff before we get to the PS5 games. Last was, uh, the Last of Us Part 2, 45%. I do have to go back to this because the thing is, as far as I know, from PlayStation 4 to PS5, it looks as though developers cannot do what they did with ps3 vita and ps4 which is some developers if they wanted to they could use the same title id across all those games and thus the trophy list can be shared so if you're into trophy hunting you already know at this point you can stack certain lists based on regions uh, or on game versions and sometimes you can't because the developer will make it so one game will share three different lists it appears as though that's impossible from ps4 to ps5 Meaning that I could, in theory, wait for a PlayStation 5 native version of The Last of Us Part 2, which we're sort of expecting at some point. But honestly, I have to finish the PS4 version because I'm pretty sure that um, I will not be able to migrate that list and continue it over there, right? I might be able to transfer the save file and then earn the 45% that I've earned up to that point. But um, I would have to complete it on PS4 if I want this 100% there. Also, Uncharted 4, <laughs> Thieves and I still haven't platinum did. I finished the game uh, at the time, but haven't done the full 100%. Cuphead, you all saw I made that its own dedicated video. That was uh, a beautiful disaster of an idea. So I love Cuphead. It's a very challenging platinum. It's a very rewarding platinum. It's certainly doable, but it's challenging. It will take a lot of restarts, and it will be frustrating. If you can, if you want to see that, <laughs> that video and you haven't saw it yet, go ahead. I tried to manage my frustrations in there and i certainly cut a lot of f-bombs it happens for me trust me uh but <laughs> filming that video and making it a video was awful because i had to film every single attempt in the in the chance that the one that i you know i had a successful attempt at a boss or whatever so i had 200 400 something gigabytes of footage that i had to waft through and splice it all together and i had to cut it and condense it so it wasn't too long and obnoxious that was a video where i i I bit more I bit off more than I could chew let's just put it that way Ghost of Tsushima I'm I'm embarrassed I've said it before I haven't finished it I started it I loved it but I got so into like all the the side missions and stuff that I wasn't doing the main quest and then you know it was so close to PS5 I was running out of time to to work towards it and then the PS5 you know games showed up and all that stuff and that's where I wanted to um, actually commit some time some serious play time to PS5 outside of the videos that we do here I want to make sure that I can um, play a good amount of it and so the one trophy video that I wanted to do because I knew this would be much more realistic to approach versus the Cuphead one was Astro's Playroom I knew it was a short game and I knew it was a celebration of PlayStation history so I thought it would be really fun to capture my reaction to every single thing that I ran into while playing it it's a separate video you can go check it out but it's a lovely game and it's absolutely worth playing when you get your PS5 it's packed in for free and I 
I would say jump into that first before you jump into whatever other software you've bought for your PS5. Demon Souls is my second PlayStation 5 Platinum. I mean, come on, you have to play it. It's honestly, it's it's not like a true system seller to the same effect of like, I don't know, other software that you might see with um, systems that launch and they're brand new, right? You're always better off waiting to buy a console eventually. But Demon Souls is an excellent launch title. It's a beautiful remake. It's it looks fantastic. In terms of trophies, uh, so the game for me took about 80 hours. I have very little experience with the first Demon Souls. And the thing is, with this game, like, it's normal to say that, oh, the second time you go through something, you'll, you'll get through it much faster because you already know what you might have not known the first time. Demon Souls, that's ramped up a lot because when you go into the game, there are certain things that you have to watch out for and be aware of in terms of this mechanic in the game called World Tendency. If you're not aware of it and you're not acutely and you don't acutely understand how that system works, you could severely add five, 10 plus extra hours to the game without even realizing it in terms of a trophy run. So it took me 80 hours because I, you know, was dying when I shouldn't have. <laughs> and, uh, and that's gonna happen if you don't really know about the game going into it. And so you could, you know, you could put yourself in a position of like a third playthrough. But if you know the best way to approach it right away, then you can do like a playthrough and a half, I think, if that, which could severely cut the time down to like a 25, 30 hour platinum. I mean, if you're really good at the game, of course, it's also skill dependent, so you could get it down probably even faster than that. But Demon's Souls is also something where it was my first genuine playthrough of the whole game. Again, I have very little experience with the first one, so I wanted to give it a lot of attention and it was great. Bug Snacks was my <laughs> third PS5 platinum. I love this game. I really, really do. Uh, you know, I, I get it. It was part of the, what it was uh, shown off in the PS5 future uh, games event. The first, our, our first reveal of the console, right? It showed up, people laughed and clowned at it. But once it said like, oh, the developer Young Horus, creators of Octopath, uh, uh, not Octopath, Octodad, I was like, oh yes, I'm on board. Cause I love that stuff. It's weird, quirky. It's, and you know, Bug Snack, that's what Bug Snack says. This game is so, it's charming, I love the music, I love the writing, I love the characters, it's, this is a game where I finished it because it was part of PS Plus, right, so it was free. I finished it, and then I was like, oh, is there a physical copy coming, which there is. So I pre-ordered that, even though I don't, I don't have any intention of like opening the game when I get it, but it's just something where I'm like, yes, I will support uh, this game. I can't wait to get a physical copy of that. Bug Snacks was awesome. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, all, 70, all 79 trophies completed in three weeks, one day. So, um, confession here, I did never, I never completed Spider-Man on PS4, 100%. It was something where I dabbled in it, played a few missions. I thought it was really engaging at the time, but I also played that off my main account, knowing that, like, eh, I don't think I'll go through this completely. I'm not huge into, like, the MCU or comic books or anything like that. I was never super into that growing up but by the time you know ps5 came around we knew about the remastered version i decided okay i'll go all in and uh, play the remastered version i specifically chose to do that because it, if you don't know you could in theory play the ps4 version get the full platinum do the save file import and then what you've earned it will auto pop all the trophies on playstation 5 so i could have played the ps4 version and got two platinums for what is one playthrough i like trophies a lot but i will play the better version purposely because uh i'm fine with playing the best version right away and not having that extra platinum it's not that big of a deal to me i didn't want to play a lesser version of the game for no apparent reason and plus i didn't have any uh emotional attachment or bias towards the um the original face actor or the face model rather so i was okay with going into this one and going okay this will be my peter parker i'm you know because it's, sometimes it's hard for people to get over that mental hurdle so so many were upset with that uh the face swap but yeah the spider spider-man remastered had a lot of dlc some of those dlc missions were really annoying like the screwball missions i did not like those i thought those were really bad but the game itself i didn't think i would i didn't think i would like tear up at the end of a spider-man game do you know what I mean? If you've played it before, I was just like, this is incredibly engaging. I just, I didn't expect it. I mean, it's, and it's such a straightforward platinum too. There's nothing I love more when a game has no missable trophies. 
you can do everything after you've completed the game. It's very direct in terms of what you have to do. You don't, you don't have to look out for certain things, right? It's just, there's no better game to trophy hunt when it's just something you can jump into and not have to worry about checking the guide and being mindful of certain things. Dirt 5 for PlayStation 5. So I've never actually played any of the games in the Dirt franchise, but I figured, okay, PS5, it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of software to go around in terms of native PS5 games. So let me try Dirt 5 because I, you know, miss MotorStorm a little bit. Not, It's not, you know, exactly the same game, but it's an arcade racer on Dirt. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me do it, right? Not to be literal, but that's what it was. Uh, and it's a fun game. However... It had many glitches and issues on PlayStation 5. Not the game itself. Well, I mean, it had some frame rate problems, but um, trophies were glitched. So I can't stand when, the, when this happens because I'm somebody where it, I want to get the problem fixed right away. Like, it drives me insane. It's hard for me to let go of something and wait patiently. However, I had to do that. So there was two or three trophies that didn't unlock right away. And then I thought, all right, I'm just going to let this game sit. Because I know it's getting a lot of support long term. And that's why you can see it. it's 75%. Uh, so DLC trophies just recently came out. And I just got that typical, like, oh, you just ruined my 100%. But that's fine. I'll go back to it and uh, clean it up when I have the chance. But it was um, it's a fun game. I just, the, yeah, I had to wait for the, um, the developer to come in and fix some of the glitched trophies, which they did end up doing, thankfully. So I was able to easily... Uh, go back and claim the platinum which it's about a 15 something hour game it's not very long at all so very very easy to, to jump into and not super it's not a huge commitment next up is control ultimate edition this was recently part of ps plus which is so convenient when you know that there's a game that you've been looking forward to but you don't buy it right away just because you don't have the time and then eventually it comes to a service like plus or game pass or whatever so this worked out great for me because it was always on my radar back in 2019 for ps4 i didn't buy it but i always thought oh yeah i'm gonna get to this game i want to try it at some point and i'm glad that i i did uh find the time to play it on ps5 and play the ultimate edition so i had those performance modes where i did keep it on 60 fps but the ray tracing mode did look very beautiful uh, yeah, it's a really fun game. It's got some really snappy, responsive gameplay once you have all the powers later in the game. Uh, although it was, early on it felt slow to me. Like, the story was a little slow and obtuse and it was hard to get into, but that's kind of like, I don't know, for me it's usually something where it's easier if I can understand what's happening. Sometimes when you've got these sci-fi or fantasy or just weird abstract stories that have a lot of uh deep and rich lore which control has there's so many like things you can pick up and read and, and stuff but when it's like what control is doing like i'm just reading it i'm like i have no idea what any of this means and it, it just it starts to lose my attention a little bit and for me nowadays i have to play games that are on the shorter side so like demon souls for example that was one of the longest platinums i've done since uh, Death Stranding actually which is one that I did and I brought up in the last uh, trophy update video but yeah normally I need something a little more straightforward for me and I'm glad that I stuck with it though because the game gets really fun once you uh, really dive into the the late late sections and then my most recent one was Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales so of course the thing is like I don't want to jump into Miles Morales right away I did Spider-Man Remastered first uh, because I didn't I knew I didn't complete it from beginning to end when you start Miles Morales it asks you it asks you do you want to see all the events up to this point and you know even you could start Miles Morales and and watch that and not have to play the original but that's you know I know a lot of people that often like to do just that play everything in sequential order some games stand on their own and you can get away with that on Miles Morales but I also was aware that this game was short shorter than the uh, 2018 Spider-Man so want to get that done then came to this knowing that it wasn't going to take that long and i loved miles morales it's just the the music so good i had the uh, the uh, bodega cat uh suit on like <laughs> for most of the game once i got that i was like yes i always thought that was so cool when they were showing that in the pre-release footage and the story i uh, really loved some of the the, uh, the themes that miles morales was putting down and it did you know in, inherently in terms of gameplay it felt very samey I think it's hard to step away from that when it's, you know, it's still Manhattan, you're still Spider-Man, but I think they did enough to where they limited what you were able to do from the, the 2018 game and gave you the Venom powers and Miles Morales, and it felt different enough for what was a game that wasn't as long 
as uh, that previous entry. So that is pretty much everything. You can see uh, my updated stats here. Uh, world rank and country rank are down, but I've never cared about that stuff. I always care more about some personal goals that I set for myself, like my completion rate. I still would like to see this at 90%, but I got to knock down the unearned trophies. And uh, I do know that <laughs> there's often a lot of requests for something like the 30 Platinums in 30 Days video. We could do something like that again. I do uh, plan on eventually starting another trophy challenge type thing, right? Not to the same effect, but maybe similar to, to that before. It's just an undertaking when you have to play a bunch of games and do that alongside other projects that I'm working on for uploading to the channel. So uh, I'm trying to find when there's a good time to do that, but something is eventually coming. And until then, you should subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on this channel. And also, thank you so much for watching. So I hope, you, hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Let me know what you've been playing and platinuming. I'm always looking out for some recommendations. So if you've got some, by all means, send them my way. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.